Mobs are a huge part of Minecraft, and they have a lot of features surrounding them. So in this video, I'll show you 20 things you didn't know about mobs, and we're starting right now. Husks are of course the desert zombie, but something you may not know about them is that if they go into water, they will slowly convert into zombies. That's right, if a husk is in water for too long, they will basically re-moisturize from a dried out zombie into a normal zombie. You can see it just like that. It's crazy to see that happen in real time. There's even a special sound for it. Definitely not something you normally see in Minecraft, but now we have all these zombies. And of course, when these zombies are in the water for too long as well, then they will convert into drowned. Tropical fish can spawn in 22 different varieties. Or can they? Now there are 22 different main varieties of tropical fish, but there's actually 2,700 other varieties. So how it works is that 90% of tropical fish spawn in as one of these 22 different types, but 10% of tropical fish can spawn in as basically a random variant of any of the different shapes or colors, which grants you 2,700 different variants. So if you're going through the ocean and you happen to see a beautiful tropical fish, and you notice it is not one of the normal variants, and that is a very very rare thing to have as finding another tropical fish like that might take thousands of hours. Now you may be wondering how do I know if my fish is one of the normal 22 varieties or if it is one of the special fishes and it's quite easy. Well normally they'll look like this or this queen angel fish with just the name there but if you happen to see it say the name and then under that different colors with a comma in between that means you have one of the rare 10% chance types of fish and of course if you love the variety of it you can collect those as one of the rarest mobs in the entire game. So it's always good to look out for different types of tropical fish because you may find one one that is truly one of a kind. Now zombies are one of the most common hostile mobs in the game, but they also have a super unique characteristic, which is of every single mob in the game, they actually have the chance of dropping the most different types of items. Of course, here we got unlucky with just rotten flesh, but there's actually a chance to get carrots, potatoes, cooked potatoes if you have a fire aspect sword, you can also get armor of every single type in all four varieties, so you can get boots, helmet, chest plate, and leggings, in leather, gold, iron, even rarely diamond, and other variants of that. You can also rarely get shovels and iron swords from zombies. And of course, the famous rotten flesh drop. Comparing this to the mob that drops the second most amount of items, which is the witch, they can drop seven different types of items normally, and four different types of potions if you're lucky. So just remember next time you're fighting zombies, you get a huge variety of different types of items from them. Just like I did right here with this carrot. When journeying through the nether, you'll probably run into some magma cubes, but there's an interesting feature of the magma cube, which is unlike almost every single mob in Minecraft, they cannot pathfind towards you. Now I don't mean they can't target you and walk towards you like these two are now, of course they can do that. As this one is here, and we just go behind this wall, well they can't pathfind in the sense that they only look at you and go straight towards you. They're not smart enough to try and go around a wall to get you, like a zombie let's say, or maybe a skeleton would. As fortunately for us, but unfortunately for the magma cube, it is too stupid to get over this wall. And as you can see it stayed right over here, because it didn't know how to get to the other side of this to find us. If lightning strikes a creeper during a thunderstorm, it will turn it into a charged creeper. But you might have already known that. What is interesting though, is that if you give it a splash potion of invisibility, then the creeper will disappear, but its charged texture will not. So you kind of have this weird cloud-shaped texture moving around, as you see that lightning-y creeper try and get you. So it's kind of odd to see this, I'm not exactly sure why this is the case, maybe it's even a bug, and unfortunately because of that you will not be fooling your friends anytime soon into thinking that there's no charged creeper and then them accidentally getting blown up by one, because you can very well see that they're there. Everyone in Minecraft knows how to make a snow golem, simply break eight pieces of snow, craft those into some snow blocks, and once you have two snow blocks, then find a pumpkin, just carve the pumpkin with some shears, grab that carved pumpkin, and then place on the ground two snow blocks and the carved pumpkin on top of that. But what you may not know is that you can actually shear that pumpkin right off of the snow golem. Just right click on it with some shears and you can see there, the carved pumpkin came right off of it. And we now have this snowman texture underneath, which is pretty good if you ask me. I'm not exactly sure why the pumpkin stays there, or even why you have to use that to make the snow golem. 
But there you have it. And you can even use that pumpkin to make another snow golem if you just pick up a bit more snow. Maybe even snow that the snow golem itself put down. So really, if you have two snow blocks and one curved pumpkin, you can make infinite snow golems if you keep recycling their head. The Wither is the mob in the game that attacks every single creature that is not undead. However, there is one exception to this, which is the Ghast. If we spawn in a Wither right here, you may notice something interesting which is after the Wither's initial blast. You'll notice here the Wither is not attacking any of the ghasts. This is a rather odd behavior considering the fact that the Wither will attack every other mob in the game that is not an undead mob, but the ghast as you can see here is an exception. It is funny how the Wither and the ghast live in complete harmony. I wonder if this does have to do with some sort of underlying Minecraft lore. I guess we'll never know. Now, 11% of people in real life are left-handed, and this is also true for skeletons. So in Minecraft, if you happen to find a skeleton, there is an 11% chance that it will be left-handed. You can see right here, this skeleton is actually left-handed. Not like it matters too much when it's trying to kill you and shoot at you, but if you do happen to notice that, there is an interesting fact. You can even see here, it does line up with my left hand of my character. Just be aware they're just as deadly as standard skeletons, but certainly an interesting piece of Minecraft trivia nonetheless. Before pillager raids were ever introduced to Minecraft, there was another type of raid on a village. A zombie raid, also known as a zombie siege, and these actually still happen in the game. So randomly at night, there's a chance that a large group of zombies will spawn outside a village, navigate towards all the villagers and try and kill them, and of course they will break down the doors of the village houses as well. It's interesting to see that there was already sort of a raid-like mechanic in the game of Minecraft before the pillager raids were added. And if you do happen to ever see a large group of zombies that spawn outside your village, now you'll know why. Now of course everyone who's ever played Minecraft knows what a skeleton is, but did you know that skeletons can turn into strays if they drop into powder snow just like I did here? It's true, just as the husk turns into a zombie in water, the skeleton turns into a stray like this when it enters into powder snow. It's rather interesting because strays don't spawn naturally in biomes that powder snow spawns in, but if a skeleton does happen to land in one, it'll shake vigorously like it's being converted and it'll slowly turn into a stray. Here's a fact about a less dangerous mob. We can have a llama fashion show. If you get on your llama and you equip a carpet to it, it will change the color of the clothes that the llama is wearing to all different kinds of awesome patterns, with every single carpet having a unique pattern for your llama. You can just see some of the ones I'm trying right here, and all the amazing patterns that these ones create. One of my favorites is the fact that the purple carpet will make an enderman pattern on the back of the llama. I love this feature so much, because in Minecraft there's not a whole lot of story that the game naturally provides you. You sort of have to make it yourself. But these carpets being woven like this sort of shows that the player has an idea of different things in the world, and they're representing them in their artwork. Which, if you ask me, is not only cool, but also incredibly stylish. If you've built a carrot farm in a biome that also spawns in rabbits, be aware, because rabbits will steal carrots right out of your garden. Although it is kind of a funny feature, they can totally eat away every single carrot that you're trying to grow. Foxes in Minecraft can pick up items in their mouths, but something you may not know is that one of the items they can pick up is actually the Totem of Undying. So if you kill a fox that has the Totem of Undying in its mouth, just like I did there, it actually does regenerate using up the Totem of Undying, and is even given all the status effects, which is quite a unique feature considering the fact that there's lots of items that foxes can hold in their mouths that they cannot actually use. But as you can see, this fox has been regenerated here by the Totem of Undying. If you feed a dolphin in Minecraft, either cod or salmon, a very special effect will take place. When you feed it the cod or the salmon, it will try and navigate to the nearest chest. So you can see, for instance, this dolphin here, when feeding it the food, it will navigate right over to this nearby ocean ruin with the chest in it. But what's even more interesting is that once we've broken this chest, the dolphin will realize that that chest has been broken. And so when we feed it more fish, it will lead us to a different chest. So let's feed it some fish again. And now you can see it's leaded us over here to this ocean ruin. So if you have a little bit of patience, you can get these dolphins to lead you to ocean ruins, shipwrecks, as well as buried treasure, which is a super useful thing because just a couple fish is rather easy to get. And now you have a way of getting lots of treasure early game with the help of the friendly dolphin. We all think of the nether as a place full of inhospitable and otherworldly mobs. But that's not entirely true. Chickens can completely naturally spawn inside the nether. Because 
there is a very small chance that a baby zombified piglin will spawn in as a chicken jockey, and then when the baby zombified piglin dies, it will leave its chicken behind just like this. And you can see we have this chicken completely naturally spawn in the nether, and if we even brought some wheat seeds from the overworld, and this happened a couple times, you could get your own group of chickens that spawn completely in the nether. Polar bears in Minecraft are known as neutral mobs. This means sometimes they'll attack you and sometimes they won't. But that's not exactly true, because there's one scenario in which polar bears will always attack you. Now of course if you punch them they'll attack you, but that kind of makes sense. But if any polar bear has a baby polar bear next to it, it will actively seek out and try and attack you. And one of the most dangerous things about polar bears is you would think, oh I can just escape this by going into the water. And well, you can do that. But polar bears are even more dangerous in the water than they are on land, as they can swim incredibly quickly over the water, much more quickly than even the player can, and so it is incredibly hard to outrun these mobs, basically impossible if you are underwater. But because of the fact that you can't breed polar bears, and so babies only spawn in with world generation, and they grow up in 20 minutes, you can only ever find an aggressive polar bear if you've only been in that area for 20 minutes or less, because after that amount of time, all the babies will have grown up. You may think of shulkers, and by extension shulker boxes, as a limited resource. However, as of the 1.17 update, this is not true. When a shulker hits another shulker, there's actually a chance for a third shulker to be created. So for instance, in a crazy scenario like this, you can generate yourself more shulkers. And there's farms that have been designed to use this mechanic to make yourself an infinite automatic shulker shell farm. It is kind of an odd mechanic overall, and I'm sure it was only really added just to add that renewability into the game. As in many multiplayer servers, they will install different plugins or reset the end a lot, so that all the players can have a fair share of shulker boxes. Hoglins are large, hostile, boar-like pigs that spawn in the crimson forest in the nether. But there's an interesting fact about this mob. If the hoglin happens to make its way into the overworld, it will convert into a zoglin. Now this is one of the most dangerous mobs in all of Minecraft, it is a zombified hoglin. And one of the reasons why it's so dangerous is that it's hostile to literally every single mob in the entire game. It will try and attack any mob there is, even hostile mobs. Now there are some applications of this, but it is interesting because it's one of the only mobs in Minecraft that you can get in survival, but does not naturally spawn in survival, unless of course it went through a nether portal, but those don't actually naturally spawn. So it's very interesting to see this weird skeletal zoglin in the overworld. It kind of shows that even though the nether is a barren and strange land to us, the overworld is that same thing to the hoglin, as it is literally deadly to this poor creature. Now witches themselves are a rather odd mob in Minecraft, Craft, just the way they function and look, but there is an additional effect you may not know about them. They occasionally can have purple smoke generate above their heads. I have literally no idea why this is an effect that happens in the game, but it does and it's kind of interesting to see. Oftentimes when the witches are in their witch huts, that part of them is obscured so you cannot see that, but with a bunch of them out in the open just like this, you can see the occasional purple particles do appear. I suppose these are meant to symbolize their magic or something like that. And finally, we have an interesting little fact about creepers. If creepers have a status effect, for instance, let's give it jump boost, and they happen to explode with that status effect on, when they explode, they will create a small pool of lingering potion where they did explode. You can see I just got the effect here. It's a rather interesting yet not very well known feature of the game. So if you ever give your creeper poison, then it explodes and there's a bunch of mobs around it. You could give all those different mobs poison with simply one creeper and one potion. Also, the only other way of getting lingering potions in Minecraft is of course to go to the end, get dragon's breath, and do that whole process. So to get this sort of effect this early in Minecraft is quite interesting. Anyway, that was 25 about mobs. Hope you enjoyed.